Is Jose Mourinho trying to replicate his treble winning Inter Milan side at Manchester United? My name is Steven Alisson, this is Full Time Devils and we're going to find out. United haven't started this season very well at all, I don't think anyone would argue with that, certainly not Manchester United fans. And one of the major criticisms of Jose Mourinho is our style of play. Now if you ask most United fans, I think a lot of you would struggle to actually identify what our style of play really is. Jose has found success as a reactive manager, someone that would identify the strengths and weaknesses of an opponent and build a game tactics to beat that. But his successful sides always had an identity. There's been a few people mentioned of late that this current Manchester United side bears a little bit of a resemblance to Jose Mourinho's Inter side. No, not the one that Zlatan was part of, but the treble winning side. Let's have a look at what that Inter side did, whether it fits with what Manchester United are trying to do, and you can make your own mind up on whether that is something that Mourinho is trying to achieve right here at United. Mourinho used the sale of Zlatan Ibrahimovic to effectively deliver the Champions League to Inter Milan. Zlatan's feet allowed Jose to bring in Schneider, Melito, Etu, Motta and Lucio. Effectively delivering the Champions League with those five players who went straight into his first team and became key players in that season's success. Equally important was Jose Mourinho was allowed to strip away some of the players that had passed their sell-by date. Adriano joined Crespo and Patrick Vieira as well as Maxwell and Ibrahimovic out of the door as Jose was allowed to put his identity on the team. Jose's Inter played deadly counter-attacking football and what's interesting is much like Manchester United, they're asymmetrical in their approach. It's not balanced, we don't attack like for like first down the left and then down the right. It's a bit lopsided and that's something that you could definitely say this United side is. So here's how they'd line up. As you can see, Sami Etu is down as a right winger, but in reality, he drifted inside a lot and didn't really occupy this space. Behind him, the Brazilian Maicon was fielded in the Cafu, Dani Alves, Roberto Carlos mould of being an attacking fullback capable of going inside or out. The line was led by target man Diego Melito, a real journeyman centre forward who never managed the 30 goal season before or since this treble winning year. But he scored 30 in 50 games for Jose Mourinho and Jose played to his specific strengths and looked for him to be the go-to hold up when the team needed to go direct. The creative force in this team was Wesley Schneider. Schneider was phenomenal in this season and arguably was very unlucky to miss out on getting into the top three in the Ballon d'Or. He came fourth. How he came fourth to a clean sweep from Barcelona, one, two and three when they didn't win the European Cup and he led his team to the World Cup final in the same season. I have no idea. The pinnacle of this Inter Milan side was the showdown with Pep Guardiola's Barcelona in the Champions League semi-final. Pep's side had been dubbed the greatest football team ever to play the game, beating United in the 2009 final. It was the clash of philosophies, Jose's Italian side becoming the masters of defence first football and Barcelona, the poster boys for passing and attacking. Tactically, Jose played a blinder. Barcelona didn't adapt their system to coming up against a counter-attacking side and Inter hit Barcelona's high line time and time again. The 3-1 scoreline genuinely flatters Barcelona. They couldn't cope with the speed of transition and the aggression of which Inter played with. Ibra didn't manage to get in the game at all and Barcelona's tactics of playing direct to Zlatan sabotaged Messi's ability to get on the ball, but an away goal and back at the new Camp anything can happen. To stop Messi in the return leg, Mourinho played with Christian Kivu as left midfielder and Zanetti left back, giving strength and protection against Messi, Xavi and Dani Alves coming down that side of the pitch. Into a setup to hit Barcelona on the break and might have managed it if Motta didn't get sent off 28 minutes in. This is where a real Jose masterclass begins. Jose switched to a super compact 4-5-0 and conceded possession. 81% of it was held by Barcelona as they poured forward. Jose's defensive side managed to see the game out, losing 1-0, but reaching the final where they beat Bayern Munich to become European champions. I would argue this is Jose's greatest team, where the players bought into what he was trying to do and what he wanted. If we overlay the Manchester United side, Luke Shaw in that rampaging fullback role. Sanchez is the non-traditional winger on the left ahead who cuts inside of him. Think of Luke Shaw and Alexis Sanchez as your Etu and your Mycon in this setup. Pogba could be the creative midfield role. And Matic could be that holding Cambiasso midfielder who keeps his eye on everything and plugs up any gaps in midfield when they're there. The midfield is very similar actually. Pogba as the creative spark, Matic as the ever-present, and then Inter would have Zanetti, Motta or Stankovic rotating through dependent on the threat at hand. For United, we could use Herrera, Fred or Fellaini in these kind of roles. Our right-hand side is very interesting. In Jose Mourinho's 2010 Inter side, their left-hand side was their more defensive side, and you would have Zanetti or Kivu filling in at left-back, and then you would have Pandev who played ahead of them. But the key thing to remember in all of this what, is this was more a defensive first sort of side of the pitch, and these players didn't roam from the positions. When you look at this Manchester United side, Tony Valencia is a very capable defender, but ahead of him he usually has Mata or Lingard, and they like to drift inside. It doesn't quite work in the same way. 
Another thing to note is that this centre side was built on the solid foundation of two very good centre halves. Walter Samuel had an absolute renaissance under Jose Mourinho and alongside him Lucio was phenomenal that season. United don't quite have the experience or the sheer grit at centre half that this Inter Milan side had. United aren't there yet, but if you look at some of the games of Inter Milan from the 2010 season, you will start to see some similarities between the way this Inter team plays and the way the Manchester United side plays. You can start to imagine the possibilities that might be there with this squad. But is Jose Mourinho actually building Inter Milan part two with this team? I think he could be. I think we're lacking defenders that can match up to the Warriors that he had in Lucio and Samuel. I think Pogba has the potential to be the conductor that Schneider was, but he's got to become more ruthless, he's got to become more controlling, and he's got to be able to take the biggest games by the scruff of the neck. Lukaku is already the goal in part that Melito offered, but there's involvement in the build-up play that he could definitely improve on. Matic and the supporting cast across midfield are more than capable. What makes this interesting is, again, Jose Mourinho's greatest test is Pep Guardiola. But it's not Barcelona, it's Manchester City. And Pep has implemented the style of play that he had eight years ago with Barcelona, with this Manchester City side, with a couple of tweaks. With a couple of tweaks, can Jose Mourinho implement this and be successful again with Manchester United? Real Madrid have shown us in the last three years with three consecutive Champions League wins that counter-attacking football is still king in Europe. And Leicester shown us a few years ago that it can work in England as well. But can a big team thrive by playing on the counter week in, week out? Or is it something that we have to reserve for only the biggest of games? What worries me is if we can implement this system without Jose getting the extremely specific players that he wants to play in it. But what gives me hope is that Kieran McKenna and Michael Carrick are now starting to get to grips with putting their stamp of authority on the Manchester United first team. Now Jose's shown them what he's looking for, probably from a defensive point of view. If there's one thing that I wish Carrick and McKenna could see, it was how the 2010 season evolved with Jose's Inter. So to wrap up, I think that United could be, but I don't think we're anywhere near it yet. Let me know what you guys think about this video. Let us know if this is the sort of content you would like us to produce more of, especially in the international breaks when there's not much United going on. Thank you guys for tuning in. We have been nominated for a Northwest Football Award and we are up against the Scousers. So if you want to help us win that, and you do, the link is in the description below. So please come and help Full-Time Devils in our bid to win an award. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you're new around here. Get your comments and questions in and your thoughts. Are Manchester United trying to replicate Jose Mourinho's 2010 treble winning side? Let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next one. Laters.